we live in a cave of shadows. Uh, the body is the prison, uh, uh, is the a prison of the soul. That kind of Platonic formulation emphasizes this transcendent reality. And see what practically happens here is a movement from a more undifferentiated, spirit-saturated, um, uh, natural world. Gods and goddesses that become more and more transcendent and then more and more uh, masculine in, in power until there is a unitive, uh, they become more and more systematized, with the, particularly in Greek uh, myth, and then and, and Zeus uh, attains a certain sovereignty, but particularly with, with the full emergence of, of monotheism, you have a, 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 that, that solar light of the one light, the one God, uh, attains a kind of um, clarification uh, in, in, in dogmatic power in Judaism and Christianity and, uh, and the Abrahamic uh, religions generally. And that begins to take away, this prepares the, the way for the disenchantment of the universe. And it reaches its, that reaches its extreme in the religious traditions with Calvin and, the, and uh, certain um, uh, parts of the Protestant Reformation that emphasize the, uh, the glory of God at the expense of a, of a nature that is, is seen as uh, having been radically uh, desacralized and that requires um, divinely inspired or informed human activity to redeem and uh, uh, bring to the glory of God. Okay, so, and, and you see this with Descartes, for example, who, his, his sense of confidence in, in the human self, in the human reason, is totally rooted in um, God, his, his conviction. He's got God behind him. Um, and uh, that's the underlying medieval foundation for, for the birth of modern philosophy in, in, in Descartes. He's got that confidence that human reason would not be deceived by this transcendently um, benign uh, source of reason in the universe, which is, which is God. But as this development keeps happening and you get more and more this uh, robust sense of the, the autonomous, critical, rational human self, um, the transcendent starts to disappear. Many, it's a huge process. Passion of Western Nine goes into a lot of detail about everything from biblical criticism to uh, uh, political philosophy, uh, Marx, Darwin plays a huge role, of course, um, the, the relationship between the church and, and, um, and op oppressive political and social forces that, need, that uh, are seen to as needing to be overthrown by the French philosophes, uh, uh, Marx, Freud, <clears throat> Nietzsche, they're all playing a huge role in uh, this destruction of the metaphysical uh, uh, transcendent ground that had been carried by Christianity as the, as the sovereign or dominant spiritual impulse uh, in, in the West up until its point. And then what starts happening, if you, uh, oh, a crucial, um, a crucial part of our story has to be pointed out here. The Copernican Revolution. Because it was essential to the, the birth of the modern self that it took place with the birth of a new cosmos. And that new cosmos was Copernican. The sun rose for both of them at the same time. And there was a tremendous sense of solar confidence in the modern mind that uh, was able to recognize that the earth was moving and that the sun was the, was the true center of the solar system and that the earth was moving around the sun, not vice versa. This, uh, in retrospect, we can see that the whole uh, the whole solar dominance of Western civilization that goes back to you know, 
let there be light um, in Genesis and uh, goes back to uh, Akhenaten in ancient Egypt and the, the early solar monotheism that he, that he forwarded. Um, and in Plato's vision of uh, the sun as being, you know, the, the solar logos, the divine, the, the, the embodiment and, 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 and symbol of the divine reason that rules the cosmos. Um, and Christ as the solar logos. Um, Prometheus who steals the fire, fire, the solar fire from the heavens to liberate humanity. Apollo and Helios and um, it, it's it's ours is uh, that whole powerful solar dominance is cosmically ratified with the Copernican revolution. The sun is the center. Pacino and the and the Neoplatonic uh, Renaissance philosophers were basically recognizing they were setting the stage for this with their focus on the on the um, on the sun, a, a kind of mm, sacramental uh, elevation of the sun. The moment that Kepler uh, ratified Kepler, as, as I mentioned, those some of you are in my class that I gave on Tuesday. I mentioned that Kepler was the crucial figure in in realizing the, the Copernican Revolution. He's the one that gives the mathematical foundation for it. And listen to, as this is, uh, these are his words at the moment that he basically has finished uh, uh, writing about the third of the three laws of planetary motion, which form the foundation really for the, the, the this scientific revolution, for the Copernican Revolution. And he's right from that to, to Newton. Listen to the solar symbolism and how much it's rooted in um, what I just talked about with the, the, the view of the, the sun related to God, uh, the, the sun related to um, uh, the divine reason, the, the sun as a um, shining light on the world uh, through its brilliant understanding. Now since the dawn, 18 months ago, since the broad daylight three months ago, and since a few days ago when the full sun illuminated my wonderful speculations, nothing holds me back. I yield freely to the sacred frenzy. I dare frankly to confess that I have stolen the golden vessels of the Egyptians <coughs> to build a tabernacle for my God far from the bounds of Egypt. He's like, hey. The, the uh, golden vessels of the Egyptians are like the, um, the, the mathematical forms that the Egyptians uh, in their brilliance had uh, re recognized and he's of course connecting it to the great emancipation of the Hebrews from the slavery of Egypt. And, and he said, if you pardon me, I shall rejoice. If you reproach me, I shall endure. The die is cast and I am writing the book to be read either now or by posterity. It matters not. It can wait a century for a reader, as God himself has waited 6,000 years for a witness. You can just <coughs> sense in him the, the extent of his, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a divine afflatus. It's a, he, he is experiencing essentially that moment where God touches Adam on the Sistine Chapel ceiling, and you know the divine spark happens, and that creative breakthrough takes place. Well, in this case, it's a um, it's a uh, an epiphany that is permitting the cosmic mind, in some sense, to enter into the human mind. That Copernicus, Kepler, Newton, Descartes, uh, their represent they they feel that something is happening that's allowing them to see the nature of the universe for the first time, and in some sense, they're they're emerging out of the curse of Adam. They're 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 being um, reborn. You, you get it even in Francis Bacon, who wasn't a Copernican, but it is living at this time and is experiencing the power of human reason and and uh, rational empirical science to to create a new millennium, a new world, a utopian uh, future. Um, so I often wondered why, why is it that. Um, 
you will hear more conventional modern scientists talking about how you know, we're the ones that recognize the way things really are, uh, that the man is not the center of the universe, and um, we're just uh, a peripheral speck of dust, etc. And um, all those earlier cultures and societies were living in this inflated uh, belief that they were the center of the universe. And um, I always wondered, why is it that they don't sound that humble uh, compared with, let's say, indigenous peoples? And in relationship to nature, the scientific mentality uh, in the West has not tended towards um, the same ex degree of mm, spiritual ecological kinship with the larger matrix of nature. So what, what, what is happening there? And I finally realized one day that there is a, uh, that what happened with the Copernican revolution was such a sense of being illuminated by the divine mind that came in with a, such like a religious epiphany for each of them that, and it gave such confidence to the to the modern mind as being superior to every other form of human culture and cognition, that there was a, a fundamental decathexis uh, from the earth and cathecting, that is investing one's identity and emotional and mental energy in the sun, that it identified with the sun, the enlightenment, Brilliantly, human reason could shine its light on everything in the world and transcend nature and transcend the body and transcend the earth and understand the cosmos itself because of the brilliance of human reason, which had symbolically or archetypally in the background this identification with the sun as the solar logos, the divine reason that, sh that uh, shines its light on, on the whole. But the world is deep deeper than day can comprehend. And what was left out in that great um, illumination is <clears throat> the other half of the story and how uh, we, and this begins to shed a, uh, shine a light on that great paradox of Western civilization, Western consciousness, and the European uh, North American project in human history that now affects the whole world and informs the whole world. How is it that um, there's, on the one hand, we can recognize so much brilliance and dynamic, uh, even nobility and heroism uh, in this tradition, the great uh, insights of, of Greek philosophy, the, the, the emancipatory power of the democratic uh, 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 revolutions and movements towards uh, civil rights, the, the awareness of, um, of a, uh, the great tragedians, for example, the, of the, like Shakespeare or the Beethoven symphonies or um, the great dignity and intelligence of Mary Wollstonecraft, for example, uh, writing Vindication of the Rights of Women. Um, 